I love traditional Italian pastas, I love traditional Asian ingredients, and I also love to put them together sometimes. Now you guys also love it because some of my most popular recipes are fusion pastas. Now I've gathered together some of my best, starting with kimchi carbonara, cacio e pepe noodles, creamy miso mushroom gnocchi, my quick Asian ragu, and then finally my very best beef stroganoff. Don't come at me in the comments just yet. We're, we're not using cream, we're doing the egg and the cheese thing and the pasta water, but I'm gonna add in some kimchi because I really love the kind of funky umaminess you get from kimchi. <laughs> okay, let's get our pasta going first of all, and I am gonna add some salt into my water here. A lot of salt. I want my pasta to be beautifully seasoned as it cooks. Now I've got my spaghetti. Okay, so while that spaghetti is going, we've got a few things to do here. First of all, I wanna get my cured pork kimchi business kind of going on. So I've got a little bit of olive oil I'm gonna put in this pan. And look, my preference is to use guanciale for carbonara. I actually couldn't get any today at my market, so I'm using speck instead. But I think the point is you want nice big chunks of your cured pork, not sort of like little thin bits of bacon. Now I wanna get these pieces sizzling in the oil, releasing all of their yummy pork fat. I mean, that's really the essence of a carbonara for me. You've got that beautiful porkiness and the creamy, cheesy egg kind of sauce. So now for the not so traditional. Uh, here is my kimchi, and I wanna finely chop these pieces. Now you could kind of tone down the funkiness by adding less. You could dial up the funkiness by adding more. I think around about kind of half a cup is a good, good measure of kimchi. Now you can see that I'm starting to get some really lovely little bits of colour going on uh, in that pan. So now I'm going to add in that chopped kimchi. Okay, so I just want a few minutes in here with the heat on, just so like that, you know, tasty salty kimchi kind of makes friends with all that pork fat going on in there. So what I can do now while I'm waiting for my pasta and for my pork mixture to cool down is the eggs and the cheesy business. So I like to do a mixture of whole eggs and egg yolks. I think that makes things a little more richer. Um, now, just three whole eggs and then the two egg yolks. Just give those a mix. And now the cheese. So I'm using Parmigiano and you just want to add a very generous amount. Okay, mix that cheese through. Now because this is a really simple dish, I think each little detail can make all the difference. So I'm using pepper here, but I've freshly ground it so you get that really nice, lovely hit of fresh pepper. Okay, so my pork mixture here is nice and cool and that is about the right timing for my pasta, it seems, because that is beautifully cooked, just al dente, so it's still a little bit of cooking to go. Um, and I want that to happen in the saucepan because I want the pasta to finish cooking and soak up the sauce as it goes. Okay, so my pan is nice and cool, so adding these eggs shouldn't result in a scrambled mess. And now we exercise some patience. So I'm just gonna keep swirling this around a little first. And then I'm gonna put the heat on very low. So I don't want this to happen too quickly. I just want things to get nice and sticky and shiny and luscious without scrambling. I do wanna use some of this pasta water as well. So the pasta water kind of Adds a bit of seasoning as well, because it's a little salty, but it kind of gives you a little bit of that starchiness. So the pasta water and the oil and the fat and the cheese and the eggs, it's kind of what gives you your sauce. So keep stirring. Don't be tempted to go too high on that heat. Now this can take anywhere up to five minutes, depending on how low and slow your heat is. You can turn it up, but you know, uh, just be a little careful. Okay, so now we're starting to see that magic happen. See how that sauce is thickening up and it's getting all glossy and quite tight. Like there's not much loose 
um, sauce going on there in the bottom of the pan. Now pasta will wait for no man or woman, so make sure you serve it up straight away. A little bit of cheese, or a lot of cheese, whenever you like. Just a little smattering of spring onions, and there you go. Kimchi carbonara. Ah, oh, that looks so luscious. I am very excited. Mm. Pork and kimchi, like it was made to go together. Mm. Got so much going on there. The kimchi, the salty pork, and that beautiful pasta. You know, when you treat something as humble as spaghetti with a lot of respect, and you get it in that pan and you let it slowly do its thing, soak up that sauce, it makes a world of difference. Mm. Perfect. Cacio e pepe literally translates just cheese and pepper, but you know, you don't, it doesn't exactly specify what kind of pepper does it? <laughs> you know me guys, we're gonna be adding in a little surprise ingredient here that's not quite traditional, but we'll add a little extra something. So let's go in with our, first of all, typical ingredient, black pepper. And what we wanna do here is really make pepper the star of the show. So I want you to get whole peppercorns. We wanna toast them first, cause that's gonna release all of their beautiful aromas and flavors and essential oils. So into a dry frying pan. And then here comes the little extra guy that you wouldn't expect, and that is Sichuan peppercorns. So these guys have a really beautiful, high sort of citrusy top note, plus they kind of add a little numbing, tingling kind of sensation. They're just great. So they're gonna go in with my black peppercorns. Okay, now I don't want you guys to walk away here. Um, you need to tend to your peppercorns. Just shake the pan, keep them moving. Uh, we don't want any of those peppercorns to burn. All right, now that is smelling amazing. Once you can start to smell that aroma and you can see a little whisper of smoke, it means they're ready to go. So I'm gonna get them into my mortar. Now you just wanna grind this to a kind of medium fine kind of grind. I really want some nice sort of chunky pops of, of pepper when I'm eating my pasta here. All right, so this is the kind of situation you're after and just scoop that out for later. All right, so let's talk about cheese here for a minute. I love talking about cheese. Um, we're using the traditional cheese here, Pecorino, which is a sheep's milk cheese. Now, it does look a little bit like Parmesan, um, but it is a lot sharper, a lot more astringent, a lot saltier as well. So if you can get a hold of it, it really does make a big difference here. And you want a lot of it, like a really good fine grating here. Can you ever have too much cheese? I don't, I don't think so. Go hard on the cheese. All right, so next thing we wanna do is we wanna get our sauce started. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna break this up a little into a few different stages, just because for me, like pasta cooking is really time sensitive. So I wanna get as organized as I can before that starts to happen. So what I need is some butter and just half of this butter into a saucepan. Okay, so once this butter is a little melty in here, now we wanna go in with our pepper. And just let that foam a little, just for a minute or so. And then I wanna turn that off. And now we're gonna deal with our noodles. So the most important thing here is that we wanna cook our noodles or pasta, whatever you're using for this dish, in rapidly boiling water and it's gotta be really salty because the saltiness actually not only affects the flavor but also the texture of the noodle or the pasta as well. I generally have two salts in my kitchen um, and a lot of you guys ask me about salt. So here's our little salt primer if you like. So I tend to have this kind of like cheaper, coarser salt for things, you know, throwing in lots of salt into pasta water and that sort of thing. And then I will have like a little crystally kind of salt. This is a flaky sea salt and they're both salt, right? So they're both salty, but the thing is the texture. So this crystally one is really great for finishing foods. It kind of has a bit of a crunchiness, a crunchy texture that, I don't know, it makes it more special. Anyway, there you go. Um, point is, let's get some salt into some rapidly boiling water. Okay, so let's talk about carbs and I am using Chinese, fresh Chinese egg noodles uh, because you know me, I like to mix it up. <laughs> uh, and also I like that kind of fresh um, egg pasta kind of texture and flavor here. But you could use uh, more traditional, you could use dried spaghetti here as well. Choose your own adventure. Uh, right, so this is gonna go into the water. 
Okay, so now we need to work really quickly here. I don't want to overcook those noodles. So I need a cup of that cooking water and I'm just going to pour half into the butter that I've just had heating up again. Okay, that's a nice sizzle there. And stir in half of the cheese. Now get those noodles straight in there. In with the rest of the butter, the rest of the cheese. And now we are mixing. So this is the part where it all comes together, the water, the cheese, the butter, everything will start to look super glossy and shiny and amazing. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my noodle cooking water. You just want things to kind of be loose um, and shiny, not too thick here. And that is looking pretty amazing, my friends. Now, this will wait for no one. Get it straight out onto a plate. A little bit more cheese because you can always have more cheese. And there you go guys, cacio e pepe noodles with a little Szechuan peppercorn kick. Let me just get right in here and make sure that it's, you know, a good one for you guys. Mmm. 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 Wow. This is really badass. That Szechuan peppercorn like gives you this really big hit of, I don't know, like citrusy peppery stuff and then you get this like really tingling numbing sensation mm, yeah this is keep it for sure mm. cheesy creamy so super lush i mean this gnocchi it's all the things my friends we are making creamy miso mushroom gnocchi Okay, let's talk about mushrooms first of all, because one of my little cheats whenever I'm doing a mushroom dish, whether it's spaghetti or this gnocchi dish, is actually to throw in a little bit of dried shiitake mushrooms. These guys have way more punch, I think, and they add a whole bunch of umami and really great deep mushroom flavor. So along with the fresh, throw in some dried shiitakes. These have been soaking in warm water, so they're nice and soft now, so just kind of drain them off. a little squeeze and now the stem part doesn't matter how long you soak them for is always going to stay like hard and woody so cut that out and do you know what's great about using dried shiitakes is that they're really very much cheaper than buying fresh um, so you're kind of getting really good bang for your buck with these okay now just some slices And then I happen to have a really great market nearby, uh, which has always a beautiful, fresh array of lovely mushrooms. Look, you don't have to go um, to the trouble of getting all these fancy ones. You could literally just use button mushrooms here and it'd be great. But I have some oyster mushrooms. Always with these, I like to tear them. I like the texture a little bit more, a bit chunkier. And then some shimji mushrooms. And these ones are like big king browns. So I'm gonna slice those. They're a bit sort of firmer. And these are actually some fresh shiitakes as well. So you still need to take that stem out and then you can slice them. Okay, so that is my beautiful array of mushrooms, which does look very special. I mean, I get really excited about this sort of thing, but I don't know. Dax, you probably don't find it so exciting. <laughs> Pile of mushrooms, get you going. I'm very excited. <laughs> They're beautiful. Anyway, they're beautiful mushrooms. So they're, I, mushrooms. <laughs> they're good looking mushrooms. So I think it's really exciting. Um, so mushrooms are done though. Uh, what I've got over here is some boiling water. And now I'm just using store-bought regular supermarket gnocchi, not any like fancy farmer's market ones or anything because uh, I have a little tip for making these guys uh, sort of taste a little bit better if you like. Sometimes the supermarket ones are really firm. So my tip is cook them for way longer. I'm gonna get them in before I've even started my sauce. So they go straight in. So while the gnocchi's cooking, um, I'm gonna get on to doing the sauce, but first up, I just wanna loosen up a little bit of miso paste. So yes, I'm using miso. Um, I love using miso uh, with Italian pasta dishes. I think the miso and the cheese and the cream just go so well together. Um, so I'm using a white miso paste here. Just a little dash of water here. This is just to kind of loosen up the paste a little before I get it into the frying pan. Let's give it a mix. 
And now we want to start off with some butter. I mean, you know, all good creamy luscious things start with butter. And now usually people like to go in with the garlic first. I don't like to do that because I think the garlic burns and I like to get a really nice sear on my mushrooms first. So I'm gonna put mushrooms in first. And you wanna give these time to really get a little bit of color, develop some flavor. So once your mushrooms uh, have wilted down a little, they've got a nice amount of color, then you wanna go in with your garlic. So that way you won't burn it. And you still get that really fresh, lovely garlic flavor. Okay, I'm gonna now go in with my miso paste mixture. And some cream. Oh, I mean, it already looks so lush, look at that. Okay, so I want this to kind of bubble away quite fiercely um, for about five minutes until we've got a lovely thick sauce going on. So while I'm waiting for my sauce, I'm just gonna slice up a little bit of spring onion. Now, if you have a look in here, you can see that that gnocchi is bubbling away there, floating on the top of the surface. And again, if you're using fresh gnocchi, that's the time to pull it out. But because we've got our store-bought gnocchi, it's a lot firmer and drier, I'm gonna let it keep cooking. Have faith. And now we go in and grab a hold of our gnocchi. So once we've reached this kind of really lush, creamy kind of business going on here, there's one other little tiny secret ingredient here, and that is a little dash of sherry vinegar. This totally makes all the difference. It kind of brings out, I don't know, all the umami and kind of a little bit of the tangy sweetness of the whole dish. It's, it's a killer secret weapon, that one. All right, mix that through and a nice big handful of spring onion. So just be gentle here. I like to kind of like stir and, and shake a little bit because I don't want that gnocchi to break up. So now what we need is a whole big plate full of gnocchi and some cheese. Don't forget the cheese. Ah, oh, looks so good. Some Parmesan cheese. I like to go extra with the cheese. Oh. And there you go, friends. Like, super easy gnocchi recipe to do, but just those little extra bits like the sherry vinegar and just treating those mushrooms really beautifully, it's gonna make all the difference. Oh, I can't wait to get in here. I am very excited about this one. Mm. Creamy, mushroomy, got a bit of that garlic just that slight tang from the vinegar. But I have to say that uh, those dried shiitake mushrooms add such a big amount of flavor here. It's really like, it's a big secret little tip for this kind of mushroom dish. Mm, so good. Yum. Rich, meaty ragu. Now this is the kind of pasta dish dreams are made of. Mine has a little twist, you'll see. This is my Asian ragu. So I have taken that wonderful thing, uh, ragu, <laughs> and put my own little spin on it, but also try to improve things a little to make things quicker, but a whole lot beefier. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, first of all, we're gonna get going on this beefy, meaty part, first of all. So I was trying to think like, how do we make our ragu more intense, more beefy without, you know, simmering for hours and hours and hours, which is traditionally what you would do. Um, so this is what I came up with. Now I want my pan here heating up really nice and hot. That's really key here. Um, and I want some olive oil here as well. You'll notice I'm doing this in a wide pan as well because I want to get the maximum amount of evaporation in a quick amount of time. That's all going to help the shape, the heat, the all the things. So this first part of the cook here is kind of what I like to call like 
a burger kind of situation. So uh, what I'm trying to do is get a really, really hard sear on this beef. And you know that, that beautiful crust that you get on a burger, that beautiful smell, uh, that beefiness, that's what I wanna go for here because that's gonna layer, start to layer up the flavor of our ragu. Um, so my beef mince, a nice fatty kind of beef. I like to go with like an 80-20, 20 fat, 80, 80 meat portion. Proportion, portion, proportion. Now get that beef, just kind of like sprinkle it in. And I want a really good pinch of salt here. And then don't touch it. Just let it sear. Let it go for like three, four minutes. Okay, so you should literally like have enough time to make yourself a cup of coffee before you go back and touch this, which is what I did. <laughs> uh, okay, so now that I've made my coffee, this is actually looking really good. So have a look at the color here. It smells like burgers in here. That's what you should be aiming for. Now what we're gonna do is flip all of this over. Who wants to guess what kind of coffee is my favorite? <laughs> am I a fancy espresso girl or am I an instant girl? Dax, you <laughs> Don't give it away. Why don't you guys have a guess below? All right, so um, this is now looking really great. All the color, that's all, that's all the things that I want in here are going on. Um, now I'm actually gonna get in with some pork mince. So I kind of use the beef uh, in a way to get all the flavor, but as you might think, if when you're hard searing like this, things get a little dry, which works out in the end, but the extra pork mince adding that in now, that will actually give the meat a lovely soft um, texture throughout the sauce. So, you know, there's always method to the madness. Okay, so I've broken up that pork, sort of mixed it right through with the beef there. Now I'm gonna go in with my garlic, toss that around, and once you can smell that garlic, um, because it's sort of hit that heat and it's got a little bit of a saute on it. So first up, I'm gonna go in with some Korean gochujang chili paste. Now I'm gonna go in with uh, some ingredients that are gonna really like boost the savoriness, the umaminess, if you like, of the sauce. Um, we're gonna go in with some tomato paste. I like to mix those through the beef and just kind of get some of that paste cooking out before I add the rest of my ingredients. Now I'm also gonna go in with some tin tomatoes. I like to use whole peeled. I do think they are slightly more concentrated than your crushed tomatoes. Okay, now I want some soy sauce as well. And I think just these little things, right? Soy sauce instead of salt. Soy sauce adds the saltiness, but also gives you the extra dimension of that umami and savory flavor. Now, another few kind of little secret ingredients here is some star anise. Now, this guy is surprising. I think that this spice um, really adds a kind of meatiness whenever you, I'm doing meat braises, whether it's an Asian braise or this kind of style of Italian ragu. And that's it. So I'm gonna turn the heat down now, sort of medium, medium low, and I want to let that simmer for 20 minutes. So usually you would simmer this for like three hours if you're doing a traditional ragu. Um, but all those extra bits and pieces, that's all kind of like, you know, trying to help this quick simmer along and getting that really beautiful big flavor. Um, so yeah, 20 minutes, uncovered. So just before, or like 10 minutes before your ragu is ready, you wanna get a few things, extra bits and pieces ready. So we're gonna make ours like a little bit special here. We're gonna make a lemon pangrittato. Pangrittato? Pangrittato. That is like the worst Italian accent you've ever heard. You said in Italian, Dax. <laughs> Perfect, that's great. Like Dax said it, we're gonna make one of those. Um, you want a little bit of olive oil. Basically it's just like fancy breadcrumbs. Um, I'm gonna use some panko breadcrumbs here. A good dash of salt. And I just want to like toast off these breadcrumbs so they get nice and golden and kind of have that, you know, toasty flavor. Keep tossing those breadcrumbs around until you've got a nice color. Don't walk away. It's like nuts. Whenever I'm toasting nuts, I always walk away and burn them. All right, so once you've got that really nice golden color on your breadcrumbs, just turn that heat off. And then now we're gonna add some aromatics. So I want some lemon zest. You'll be surprised at just how extra special this like sprinkle at the end makes everything. The lemon really just lifts everything. It's great. Add the parsley in, give it a toss. Okay, sprinkle's done. Uh, now let's get on to our pasta. 
So I'm gonna use some spaghetti for this one. And I've got some water here. It is heavily salted. I do agree with the Italians on that one. Um, I want lots of salty water boiling and pop my spaghetti in. And now cook that until it's just al dente. So I probably like my pasta cooked a little bit more than uh, a traditional Italian al dente. So whatever is good for you, choose your adventure there. But I will finish off, the pasta will finish off cooking a little later on in the sauce. So don't take it all the way is what I'm saying. Just, just shy of where you like it. Okay, my pasta is at that point. It's nearly done, but not quite done. I'm gonna grab some pasta cooking water first of all. Uh, that's gonna help us with our sauce a little bit later on. You'll see. Um, okay, I wanna drain this pasta. So my pasta is back in the pot. Now what I wanna do is get my ragu and pour all of that in. And now here's where that extra pasta water comes in. So I'm gonna pour that in here. And the idea is that that extra little bit of liquid, uh, and I've turned the heat on to low underneath this pot as well. The extra bit of liquid, plus the ragu, plus this kind of mixing action, is gonna get that spaghetti really soaking up all the flavor. So instead of just having like the ragu and the sauce just kind of sitting on the outside of the spaghetti, the spaghetti kind of soaks up the flavor all the way through. So I think it's, a crucial step. I want a bit of olive oil here as well. All right, so at some point, and we're at this point here, you'll see that the liquid that was quite runny at the bottom of the pan is now really nice and thick. Everything is like sticking and looking all glossy and amazing. Okay, so now we can just get our pasta into our bowl. And now here come all the special bits. So we've got our breadcrumbs that we've made. We want some cheese. And there you go, my friends. My quick-ish, well, much quicker than a three-hour traditional ragu, my quick-ish Asian ragu. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Yes. I mean, it's a good day when you can have bolognese for breakfast. Is it breakfast time? Sort of, almost. Mid-morning time, morning tea time. Mm. That is like perfection. It's so perfect. The spaghetti is perfectly cooked, but you get this like really intense, savory beefiness going on. And then that lemon at the end, guys, honestly, that little bit of lemon at the end makes everything so extra special. Creamy sauce, beautifully tender beef. How do you make a better beef stroganoff? I have a few little special tricks and a few little extra ingredients up my sleeve. This is my version of beef stroganoff. So beef stroganoff, total classic, uh, but one of the things that I think often is wrong with beef stroganoff is the beef. It is tough and dry and just altogether not very nice. We're gonna fix that with our recipe today. Uh, so let's get started on that first of all. I am gonna start off by using a scotch fillet or a ribeye. You need a tender cut for this one. Uh, we're not gonna slow cook the beef, it's not a braised beef, um, so you kinda need like a good tender cut. A strip loin, sirloin would be fine. I fill it if you wanna get a bit fancy, um, but this is what I'm using today. And I'm gonna do something a little bit unconventional as usual. Um, I'm gonna marinate this in some soy sauce because the soy sauce is gonna give us extra flavor, a little bit of tenderizing, but I am going to kind of poke some holes in my steak first of all. I want the soy sauce to be able to penetrate really quickly. So I just wanna grab my steak and just sort of stab it with my knife. It's a little bit basic instinct, um, but you know what I mean. And then with the second one, and then pop those into a mixing bowl and then pour some soy sauce over the top. Now just give those guys a mix together and then just leave them to marinate for about 10 minutes. All right, so steaks have had their time in the little soy sauce bath, um, time to get them frying in the pan. Now, a couple of things here. So we want to fry off our steaks in the same pan that we're gonna make our sauce in. And yes, this is very unusual for a beef stroganoff. We're not gonna slice the steak. We're gonna cook it whole first, 
slice it and then add it into the sauce right at the very end. This is gonna keep it really juicy and really tender. That's my little trick. Um, so what you wanna do is get some oil into a really hot pan and then in go your steaks. All right, so what I'm looking for here, guys, is color because color is flavor. It's that reaction that happens on the outside of meat called the Maillard reaction without getting too food nerdy. Uh, but what happens is the amino acids and the sugars and everything caramelize and that brown color is the pure flavor that we want for our sauce. And that's why I was saying we want to cook the sauce in the same pan as the steaks because we want to make use of that flavor that's happening in the pan. All right, so only one to two minutes each side here. Let's have a look. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to flip. Oh, look at that color. Now that's what I'm talking about. That is beautiful. Now these are going to finish cooking in the sauce, so I'm going to take them out now before they're cooked through. Okay, so take a look in that pan. That is that flavor stuff that I was talking about. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and make our sauce. So I want some butter, a fair chunk of butter here, guys. But you know, this is like a rich, beautiful, buttery dish. And now I wanna add in my mushrooms. So here's another key thing uh, with this dish. You don't want soggy mushrooms. You want those mushrooms to really get some nice color and flavor before you start adding your other things. So I like to put my mushrooms in first. I want to let them sit and sear and get a nice sort of beautiful golden color. And now if you have a look, it's like been a minute or so and you flip those over, you can see what I'm talking about. See how they're beautifully seared. Nice. So there's kind of like a theme here. We're like, we're searing, we're building color, we're building flavor. All of those things are going to make a big difference to your finished dish. Okay. So just toss those shallots through, give them a chance to get a little bit tender there. And now we're gonna go in with some beef stock. So the beef stock's going to like, sort of like deglaze the pan, lift everything up off the bottom, any of those nice little sticky, uh, you know, beefy bits. So pour that in. Now I've got lots of little extras here that make this dish really special. One is another little unconventional uh, little addition and that is some miso paste. So miso paste full of umami, savory flavors. It's gonna like boost the beefiness, if you like, of, of the dish and, and make it just, you know, extra. So let's put that in and just kind of, it'll need a bit of help dissolving into that sauce. And I also want some mustard here for a little bit of heat and some flavor. And then some sweet paprika. The paprika here is really just for a bit of color. Mm, that is looking so joyful. Okay, now we are gonna lighten all of this up or heavy it up or rich it up, I don't know, whatever, um, with some cream. So just some heavy cream, if you're in the US and Australia, we call it thickened cream. Elsewhere it's called pouring cream, but it's kind of like about a 34, 35% fat cream is what you want. And I like cream and not sour cream here. Sour cream tends to split really easily, so I just go with normal cream. And now guys, this is where we want to slice and add our steak right here at the very end. So you want to kind of just slice through. I want th these slices, uh, pieces are probably a bit too big. So I'm just going to slice through here first and then just on an angle, kind of slice myself some nice chunky slices of beef. You can see it's quite rare. That's cool. We're going to put it into the sauce right now and it's just gonna finish off its cooking really gently in that sauce. Now to thicken up the sauce, I just wanna add a little bit of corn flour that I've mixed with some water. And that is looking totally lush. Look at that creamy sauce. That beef will have just kind of cooked through. Oh, so good. Now what we wanna do is simply spoon this over some really beautiful buttery noodles. Take your pick here, um, egg noodles, uh, little spirally ones that, like I've got here. Ladle that over the top. Now a little sprinkling of parsley. And there you go my friends, not your typical classic beef stroganoff, but my very best version, uh, tender beef, uh, leveled up creamy miso sauce. Mm, it smells so good. 
is so super tender and that sauce creamy and it's actually it's beautifully seasoned even though we didn't add any extra salt because of the soy sauce and the miso and wow wow that is totally amazing yum